corners of culture and BBC Two, etc. But they then became enormous and, and general. But it wasn't, it hadn't just begun out of nothing in no, the no. 60s. It, it, there were an awful lot of ideas which had been, been seen. But of course, the, the, the advent of, of television, and the, which was in many cases dominated, particularly under the human cars of Britain, the BBC, dominated by people with sort of Thalian, Bloomsbury, radical ideas, uh, it meant that instead of just saying that Bloomsbury group, they're talking to each other in, in, in novels that nobody read, and in the <coughs> Squares, the Bloomsbury Group suddenly gained control of national transmitters and were able through what a thought. able through well, I mean, particularly through, particularly through drama, yeah, yeah, yeah. when it plays and all the supposed satire programs that was that was and so on, so on to pro to project onto a much larger number of minds ideas which were previously not restricted to a very small number. Would you say that, uh, actually, you talk about the Blues for good, you You know, you, if you go back that far, you, you had Gramsci or whatever in the 1920s, but by the 1960s, this had become this, this slogan of the long march through the institutions, hadn't it? Well, Gramsci is, a, is an interesting thing, because he, 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 he was one of the very earliest people on the road to understand the Soviet experiment in the disaster. When there, he saw it was a catastrophe. Necessary is he didn't use this term as a cultural or moral condition, so the people who were trying to preach to be more receptive to our ideas. But as things happen, the conservative, prosperous, Christian, working classes of Europe will not ever uh, buy Bolshevism. And that's why he became so important. His idea of hegemony, his idea of taking over the, the ideas of society, was one which became very appealing to the They had the ideas, and then they met Gramsci, I think, right. But this is this is coincidental, really, that Bloomsbury is the, the, the Fabians who had their own ideas about it. For Working in a sort of almost blind way towards a similar destination, they would come together in the 1960s as a series of forces. I think it was still uh, one German revolutionary who actually came. I think it was indeed, yeah. It was a Dutch girl who turned the long march. Uh, it wasn't around, she was associated with the woman, but there has undoubtedly been a lot. Well, yes, but this is, this is the interesting point. Yeah. Well, I was on it. Right. And when I set out, when I first went into journalism, I was fully intending to, to, to gain the necessary skills to, to, uh, to spread the revolutionary message through, through newspapers and media. That's what I was intending to do. But well, not that, that, was my, that was my intention. I think I was more focused than most people. I, most of the, it was extraordinary how many members of the Blair's cabinet were actually members of the Trotsky that we know about. And I suspect there were probably more who, who, we, who we don't know about. But I, because I was a member of the revolution organization, I was more focused, uh, more conscious of what I was doing. But our ideas spread very, very widely. When I was at the University of York in the 1970s, we, we became, in the period when I was there, we became a dominant political organization. So people wanted to talk about that. It was to the international socialists that they turned. Uh, they said that they read our publications, they listened to what they learned. I don't believe that they ceased to be in favor of, of, of some sort of revolution when they got off the schools and work. I think they continue to be, um, but they've learned through the processes that we all have. And if you don't do this, you're by the slow growth of the process of inserting yourself into society and 